How's it going my WBE people, Dr. Slacking the Slacking Doctor back with the weekly recap for the SHIELD division and today I am joined by a very special guest. Yo, what is going on all you WBE people, it's Sock here with a recap but not for the sword division this time. No, you're joining me in the Shield Division. I do have to say very quickly, uh, shout out to my usual co-host Jacob as always. Unfortunately, he uh, got called into work pretty last minute, so wasn't able to make the show this week. Uh, but a huge thank you to Sork for filling in. I really appreciate it, man. Hey, it's all good. I'm glad to be recapping some more shows. If anyone knows me, I love Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. And we have some really hype games to cover. So do you want to jump straight in with the first game? Uh, as we have the San Diego Chim Chargers and Envy taking on the Durham Dredigans and Leo Six Foot Hacks. Uh, do you want to kick us off? Let us know what you thought about this game. Absolutely. So on Envy's side, he brought Rotom, Togekiss, Mega Sceptile, Victini, Azumarill, and Ditto. And Leo brought a team of Mega Lopunny and a bunch of Sacks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he also brought Como O, Manaphy, Savali, Taurus, and Uniclus. But in all reality, Mega Lopunny did the bulk of the work, as you can see here, even on the scorecard. Uh, Leo played well, but the yellow color really didn't help him because his team didn't like getting outsped. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think that Envy probably uh, looked at Leo's draft as a whole and saw that his only clerics were Manaphy and Megalopony and realized, yeah, I can kind of status spam this game and there's no way he's getting rid of it because they are not great clerics. So he definitely kind of abused a weakness in Leo's draft there that I haven't seen abused all season. Yeah, it was really interesting to see because I haven't seen Leo really get status of use. I've seen like a couple Scald Burns here and there. Uh, nothing too crazy like what Envy did. Um, I think it was great on Envy's side, realizing that, hey, uh, it, yellow color is a way to win a game, not just by paralyzing things, but by slowing the entire team down so that his Victini can just outspeed everything and kill it. I thought that was great. Yeah, I completely agree. And it's worth noting as well that whilst it can be frustrating when you're playing through paralysis and things like that, um, Envy didn't just bring it and kind of play it mindlessly. He actually played it really, really aggressively. I think he went for a triple T-wave at one point as yes. he T-waved into a Reuniclus, missed, T-waved again, got the Reuniclus uh, paralyzed, and then T-waved predicting the switch out. So he, he very aggressively spammed that T-wave. Uh, he T-waved with a Victini, I think, predicting mm -hmm. um, a switch out as well when he could have just V-created again. He, he really played it super well and got a lot of his predictions right. It wasn't just uh, a kind of skillless game or anything like that. I know people like to blame hacks and, and say that it doesn't take any skill, but I didn't think that at all in this game. I thought Envy really knew what he was no. doing and played it perfectly with the T-Wave. Yeah, absolutely. And one of my favorite things about Envy's game this time was the Encore tech with Azumarill. I thought that was really, really good and had a lot of merit this game, uh, especially knowing that Manaphy would be one of the Pokemon to try to take the Azumarill on. So Encoring it into a setup move or substitute like what happened, I thought that was just great prep and great tech on uh, Envy's side. Yeah, I agree. And the thing is, even if it had backfired and uh, Leo had gone for the energy ball, I doubt an unboosted energy ball would ever have killed Azumarill. And then being able to encore it into the energy ball means you do have a free switch into something like the Mega Sceptile or the Togekiss to then threaten out the Manaphy anyway. So even if that kind of aggressive play didn't work out and he did just go for the grass coverage, he still got momentum back in Envy's favor by doing it. So it was really a no drawback piece of prep and I was really impressed with it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I really liked though was... Um... In, because he post comes, he said in his post com that he knew it was flying early on because he took the time to look at his DS. And I want to give major props to that because not a lot of people will take the time and they'll miss that quick little second there where it says flying type Silvali on the screen. Because when you're playing live, it yes. has those little pop ups. So major props yeah, to absolutely. for that. Yeah, I think anyone that's played on Wi-Fi after playing a lo long time on Showdown, you do notice the differences and the information can be a little bit restricted on, on the wi on Wi-Fi on the DS system. So definitely correct. Like Envy looking that up and making sure he had all the information he could get was, was fantastic and good play. And in general, uh, I think that he just was able to keep the momentum through the early game so well. One of the things that Leo commented on in his uh, kind of team preview analysis uh, was that he didn't expect the Rotom to come again for Envy. And I know that you might not have analyze the previous game between these two in the regular season as much given that you weren't doing the uh, weekly recaps for this division but <laughs> during that game i really thought that rotom put in more work than leo perhaps appreciated it was able to burn the kamoo and it was really just able to spam bolt switch and get a lot of momentum for envy and i felt like that was the same here again with kamoo being the dedicated mm -hmm. kind of electric resist on this team coming in on the volt switch that meant that azumarill could come in for free every time rotom clicked volt switch and azumarill just claims a ko against leo's team so 
It's that kind of thing where Rotom on its own might not have the best offensive or defensive matchup, but simply as a pivot to bring in Azumarill, it did so much work against Leo's team. And that was something that I think caught him off guard in the early game and really put him on the back foot. Yeah, I think that was a really, really big thing as well. Um, going on to Leo's end here, I do feel like he had some solid prep, and I thought the Reuniclus was really, really cool. Um, yes, definitely. But I feel like Envy had just had all the answers, especially once he got Thunder Waved. It, it just, you could see the, the wind come out of Leo's sails. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, you could feel, uh, when I was listening to Leo's commentary on it, you could feel him really struggling to figure out how he was going to win this game. And I think he did kind of identify at one point that it was going to come down to potentially dodging a T-Wave with Megalopony. And he did manage to do that. As you can see, the Megalopony grabbing five kills. Um, his prep yeah. was very solid. You said AV, regenerating Reuniclus was great. But that Megalopony just put in so much work against Envy's team. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, he dodged two... Thunder Waves, because the first one Envy missed on the triple, and then he missed one of the Mega Lop. Yes. So it wasn't like yes. he was hitting every one of them. And there wasn't, if I no. remember correctly as well, any times where Leo's Pokemon actually got paralyzed and couldn't move. No, no, I don't think there was any at all. I think it was primarily just for speed yeah. control and also the threat of getting flinched down by Togekiss, I guess. Yeah, like that's such a major threat because that's that's a win con in itself. As I've said, Hax is a yes. win con. That's not a joke. That's legitimately <laughs> serious. Like, Thunder Wave into Flinch Spam, you, it's hard to win that game. Right. Especially with, with something like Togekiss or Jirachi, where they do it so well. The odds are almost against you to pull through there. Yeah. It's like, it, it's hacks if you actually hit something. Um, yeah, I, absolutely. I feel like Envy, honestly, I'm, I'm going to put the word as deserved to win based on the place he was making and how great his prep was, how good his play was. And overall, I think the, one of the coolest things was him going into Ditto on the Tauros, getting information on what the Tauros was. Yeah, yeah, being able to kind of force that Tauros to uh, knock itself out to recoil there, which is why you only see five uh, KOs on the MV side of the screen here, um, despite him win winning. But yeah, him, him kind of getting that information, understanding the Tauros, slowing it down with a T-Wave, of course, removing uh, Leo's Scarfer was huge as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, in general, I, I thought that he just scouted really, really well with that Ditto there, as you said, and was able to close out that end game. One thing that I thought uh, on Leo's side could have changed slightly is that early on in the game, he decided to go for the Poison Jab with the Kamoa into the Azumarill, knowing that he was sacking the Kamoa, essentially. Um, I really wonder how different this game would have been had he opted to get Rocks up instead, because Victini wouldn't have been able to switch out and in as many times as Envy did in that late game with Rocks up, because Envy knew that he just had to preserve all his sacks, throw things away, get Victini back in, and click V-Create over and over until he won. Um, with Rocks up, this game could have looked very different at the end, and maybe Megalopony might have been able to pull through. Yeah, it would have been definitely a more interesting game. And anyone that knows me knows I'm not a huge fan of Victini. That Pokemon is one of my kryptonite. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like all time, like 2 and 13 against that Pokemon. Like, oh, I just wow. can never draft a good fire resist. <laughs> It's so tough. It is such a hard Pokemon to check because with it having access to, uh, I think it's, it's Bolt Strike it uses, um, yeah. it, it's very hard to switch into even with bulky waters. You need really a fat rock type and, and they're not often drafted in this format. So it is incredibly hard to check. Yeah. I just like drafting Beware so much and Fluffy really doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> but Beware looks great on Wi-Fi. So you can't complain too much. Bear and I love him so much. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah as you say, I... I, yeah. I yeah, I, I feel like Envy deserved winner, as you said, and, and really I'm excited to see him moving into uh, the semi-finals game, the finals of course on the Shield Division side, but the semi-final for the WB this season. I think that uh, finishing as the top seed, he, he's deserved this as, on a season-long basis as well. He's been fantastic all season and, and definitely showed it again here against Leo. So do you want to move into our second game now? Yeah, we're going to move into our second game here, who is my pick to win the to win your division we have gator it's gator and his florida gators versus the maryland or terrapins and kelly aka under the radar yeah and do you want me to quickly run through the teams as we see the florida gators bringing zero aura keldeo donfan celebi archaeops and heatran and the maryland or terrapins bringing the stack attacker milotic darmanitan superior mesprit and zygarde yeah i thought it was what did really, you think really of this matchup yeah 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 go um, ahead break it down for us uh one of the first things i noticed was how cool archaeops was like 
Scarf Archeops had a lot of fun being able to use turn around on the team, getting Gator a lot of advantage early, uh, especially turn one when he, uh, I believe he let off with it just to U-turn out uh, and get, get some information. I thought that was really, really good. Yeah, absolutely. I think a choice Scarf Mon that could outspeed Darmanitan was huge against Kelly's team as he has been favoring that Scarf Darmanitan all season long. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, Gator used Celebi to near perfection because of its ability to sponge hits. You don't really see Celebi do too much often, and I thought it was played very well on Gator's end. Yeah, I, I've drafted Celebi two to three times myself, and I've never got on very well with it, but this game made me want to draft it again. <laughs> it really impressed me with how he used it. It tanked a uh, Hidden Power bug from the Superior. Um, it really yeah. just stayed around far longer than it, than it should have done, frankly. It, it had great longevity, and it was a great pivot in this game. Talking about Rotom getting a lot of momentum for Envy in the last game, uh, I think Celebi did that really, really well for Gator in this one. Mm -hmm. And one of the th craziest things was that Superior was plus two already. It had already taken a Leaf Storm damage. <laughs> so, like, it tanked it yeah. after Rock's damage, basically, at plus two from it Surf. Was so bulky. That was kind of crazy. No Tanga Berry, by the way. So, that was really, really so awesome. Um, the big focal point, in my opinion, on this one was the crit on Mesprit. Um, yes, yeah, that absolutely was, it was a, a really unfortunate bit of hacks for, for Kelly here. Yeah. Uh, like Mesprit being gone here, because uh, from Gator's point of view, and I, I'm uh, saying this as Gator's point of view here, uh, we hadn't seen an item, so it was either a Z move or mail, because when he tried to knock it off. Yes. Um. So. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Going off the fact that it's like okay, it's Z move, that Z move is gone now. A super strong attack or a super strong status is just off the field completely, and so. Yes. I believe Gator put it best when saying that the Mesprit could have just thrown off a super hard Z move the next turn and changed the complete dynamic of the game is a huge turn. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with you. One of the most interesting things, though, because uh, I initially watched Gator's side and then I went to watch Kelly's to see what he actually went for there to see what kind of an impact that would have had. Um, and I think psychologically, you know, for Gator and Kelly, it was huge. But Kelly did only click U-turn that turn, and he would have been dead to rocks after from a non-crit damage. So he never would yeah. have got the big Z move off, but it, it doesn't matter because, as you say, the kind of psychological impact that has removing such a threat so easily like that, like that and removing an offensive sack that Kelly could use later in the game definitely really, really sucked here. Yeah, it was one of the one of the most crucial things I've seen and had a lot of impact. Um the bulking up on the sack though from Zero Aura was super super clean. Um, it was great. So good. I'm sorry if you guys can hear these sirens in the background here. I don't know if you guys can. But um, I, I can just about hear there. I don't know if, if the recording will pick it up, but I can just about hear them. But you're fine. Don't worry. Yeah. So I'll, I'll we'll leave that in. Screw it. But uh, <laughs> he yeah. had Lum anyways, uh, and this was on the Milotic because the Milotic swapped out, and I believe it was sacking the. Uh, I think they sacked the superior to rocks on the bulk up from uh, the Zero Aura. And so... He, it was the uh, Darmanitan, the Darmanitan thing, sack. The Darmanitan thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the Zero Aura bulked up on the uh, swap out. And a good reason for that is because he was Lumberry. So if Milotic scalded here predicting him to bulk up on the switch, the Lumberry procs, he's fine. But even a plus one, plus yeah. one on the free switch because of it allowed him to take on stack attack so much better. And yes, it, it puts so much pressure on Kelly. Yeah, absolutely. I think we spoke about um, MV's Encore tech in the last game being no drawbacks. Even if uh, he got the prediction wrong, he still was able to get something out of it. And it was the exact same here. The, the Lumberry prep was such good prep that it really gave him that free bulk up at any time. At any time during the game from team preview, he knew I can bulk up on that Milotic, hopefully force it out, and then I'll be able to pick up at least one KO. And as you say, being able to then take on the stack attacker into Trick Room, chewing on that Earthquake quite well, uh, really put Gazer in such an advantageous position position yeah and uh if mylotic stays in scalds uh, zero aura bulked up there it's going to be a completely different ball game because gator could bulk up again and that's another ball game in itself but in this mm -hmm. realm where stack attack didn't oko because of zero Aura's plus one or uh bulk on there it was kind of interesting to see because i didn't think stack attack should come this game um i see why he brought it i i see it it, it did have merit 
But it did not have enough merit, in my opinion, to come. I think something else should have came in its place. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that uh, Kelly's matchup was was really, really tough this week, but I, I'm not sure that a stack attacker trick room win con was ever really going to be able to clean up in this game. Uh, with things like Donphan, uh, Keldeo, Heatran, and Zero Aura, so hard to break through for a stack attacker, all of them needing different coverage, all of them being, you know, things like Keldeo, people underestimate how bulky Keldeo can be and how well it can mm -hmm. take a hit. Don Fan as well being very slow, meaning it's not going to take too much from a gyro ball and it can just earthquake the stack attacker. Um, I felt like if Kelly wanted to be able to break through those things for stack attacker, then maybe he needed to use his Darmanitan more aggressively, his Zygarde more aggressively, um, and bring like a, a Life Orb, Flare Blitz, Darmanitan, and click that more into the Don Fan slot or, or banded Thousand Arrows from Zygarde. I, I felt like if he was ever going to open that hole for stack attacker, he had to play a much more offensive game than he was really able to, and, and the matchup was just super tough for him. So yeah, I tend to agree with you that I think it was a, the win con didn't quite fit the team composition for me there. Yeah, but one of the things I do want to note here is the Zygarde 50 set was so cool. I thought I thought yes. uh, Toxic and Sub was just so great versus Gator's team. For what we knew Gator was going to somewhat bring a majority of, like, it was just really cool. I love it. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think the, the only problem with it here was that we spoke about the status spam in the last game, but here having that natural Curemon in Celebi that was able to come in, take the Toxics, stay in and Grass Knot for a little while, and then pivot out again, like you said, Celebi just showing its worth here as a fantastic status absorber, uh, as a fantastic Grass type to take on the Zygarde, and I believe the Zygarde had Hidden Power flying for Mega Heracross, which was really cool prep, actually. Yes. Um, but Celebi with its natural bulk taking nothing from that yeah. <laughs> was, was able to kind Kind of I was able to, to put a stop in the Zygarde, but I agree with you that it was a really creative prep and, and did wear down the Celebi really, really low towards the end, forcing it to be sacked straight after the Zygarde pivoted out. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, normally, you don't see a Celebi versus a Zygarde ever, just because Celebi doesn't get yeah. drafted that much. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, I thought so too. Yes, and, and again, um, I think in summary, just like the last game we spoke about, I, I did feel like Gator was on the front foot for most of this game, and I did think that he mm -hmm. deserved the win. There was definitely the unfortunate hacks with the Mesprit going down to crit uh, that changed the complexion of this game. But I, I don't think that Gator really put a foot wrong. It, it, Yes, wow. he did benefit from some hacks, but he also played flawlessly, and you, and you kind of have to uh, respect that. And I think Kelly did too. And, and both of these coaches had fantastic seasons. But Kelly, as you uh, sorry, Gator, as you say, going into the next game against Envy is looking like a real threat, looking like he could go all the way to the final here. And I, I said this to, I believe it was Joe at the beginning of the season. I had Gator uh, winning the uh, Shield division outright. I, 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 it could happen. I mean, during the regular season, Envy and Gator played, and MV, uh, Gator brought, I think, five choice mons and a Z Don fan, <laughs> and mm -hmm. still managed to get the win against M against Envy. So, uh, honestly, if he brings a more serious team, then yeah, he, he seems like he could definitely pull it out. But obviously, Envy finishing its top seed is no pushover. So it's going to be a really, really exciting final for the Shield Division. Yeah, absolutely. Shield Division's going to have a great final. Uh, it's Gator and Gator versus Lord Envy and the San Diego Chim Chargers. That's going to be cool to watch. Yeah, I can't wait. Are you happy to wrap it up? Yeah, I am fine. Um, the one thing I do want to say, guys, is be sure to go follow the Pokemon WBE Twitter, at Pokemon WBE. You guys can stay up to date with any news regarding the WBE, and you also can get involved in the fan pickums. Uh, so, example, those pickums just went live, I believe, yesterday from the time I'm recording this with you, uh, Doctor. Yeah, so definitely make sure you guys check out the social media, follow everything on Twitter, and have your vote in those, because I know I haven't done very well in pickums, so you, <laughs> you guys can beat me in that, which is good fun. Hey, I'm doing perfectly fine. I got last, I got this week entirely right. Oh, nice, nice. I've made a couple of mistakes, but, you know, I've tried my best. So I've really enjoyed the Pickums, actually. I'm there every week watching the show with everyone else as a fan, and I absolutely love absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's just a great show. And like like he says, check out every show. Uh, I'm over there on the Sword Division, so if you like my commentary, be sure to check out that one. Be sure to go check out the Pickums and every other show we've uploaded. And as JB would say, yeah. hashtag disable adblock. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think this, this this season now is a winding down. It's been so much fun as part of the analyst team. I think you guys have really enjoyed the content as well. And there's so many fantastic things happening around the WBE. And just because the season's coming to a close, that doesn't mean that it's stopping anytime soon. It's been been a fantastic season. I think it will continue that way. Oh, absolutely. It's going to come to an interesting culmination. We still got three more games left, guys. Who do you think takes home the gold? We have four coaches. Ooh. We have Envy. Are we going to get the the Wolf three peat? Could it happen? I, I don't think so. I have Vivid winning this thing. Oh, I would love that. I've, I'm in I've, been, front office, I've been ride I'm or die fan, by the South so. Texas Sableyes, dude. That rhymed for no oh, reason. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to see it. Like I say, I'm in his front office. I'm a huge fan of that man. So that would be insane. But I mean, we've all the coaches left are fantastic. And we've got some great games to look forward to. Yes, absolutely. I will let you in outro this since this is your show. Ah, okay. Thank you so much for loafing around with this, guys. I hope you have enjoyed our very special guest today. And we'll catch you again next time. Peace out, scouts.